Hello and welcome to the talk. Today, I'll be presenting our work on the grounds of solutionisms, ontologies of Blackness in HCI. My name is Jay Cunningham, and I'm a fourth year PhD candidate in the Department of Human Centered Design and Engineering at the University of Washington. This critical work that I'll be presenting was theorized alongside my collaborators, Gabrielle Bandala, Daniela Rosner, and Alex Taylor. In HCI research, there is a tendency to focus on finding solutions to problems, which can lead to a lack of accountability and failure to consider broader implications. While it is recognized that solutions are often insufficient and can be harmful, there is uncertainty about how to approach design differently. This highlights a crisis in solution development and the need to question established positions. A flawed framework doesn't mean that solutions are impossible for us in HCI, but it does require critical reflection. We know sometimes that our solutions are not enough to combat systemic and social issues, and so HCI scholars must start to interrogate the positions of ourselves and our design solutions. HCI continues to struggle with inclusive design approaches, and there's much uncertainty surrounding the problem and solution binary. The field of HCI continues to struggle with inclusive approaches that effectively address the pervasive and lasting inequitable consequences of racism. HCI scholars have explored the dangers of, of developing technology in response to any and almost every potential problem. Looking at the effects of racializing technology development, we've seen contributions and artifacts produced in response to problems surrounding anti-Blackness, such as like unevenly distributed experiences among Black and Brown users in technology, surveillance in technology in Black communities, and also how AI decisions can disproportionately affect Black and Brown communities. A key strand of HCI work focuses on the absurdity of solving structural issues like black anti-Blackness and racism with individual devices, being that conventional design approaches themselves may perpetuate forms of institutional racism, enabling and legitimizing racialized forms of inequality. What we do in this work is that we extend Calvin Warren's Afro-pessimism and, and understanding that sometimes solving problems gives us a really good feeling because it gives us hope and power. But asking big questions about our existence can be scary. And because it shakes us in our sense of security, sometimes it makes us as people question our values and what it means to be human. Ontological terror engages with this very paradigm. This work seeks to engage and extend and bridge Calvin Warren's Afro-pessimistic lens with the problem-solution binary to the contributions of scholars in HCI, UX design, research, and technology innovation. Afro-pessimism harps on this theory, which sees the world as structured by non-Black solidarity and preventing the complete liberation of Black life. Kevin Warren situates it with there's no solution to the problem of anti-Blackness and it will contend without end as long as the world exists. Kevin Warren's Afro-pessimism reminds us that devices that rely on anti-Black instruments to address anti-Black racism can perpetuate and produce more harm than good. And for those of us in HCI and as we continue to produce technologies and systems, for us, we understand and we take away from Calvin Warren's pessimism that our designs might also actually only give temporary reprieve from the fact that Black communities are not safe in an anti-Black world. And so the form of anti-Blackness may alter, but anti-Blackness itself is systemic and it is rooted in social, political, um, and institutional devices that we may not always be able to address in our own capacities but in our right in our capacities as researchers and as technologists what can we do to start to reckon with the problem solution binary that we face here in hci the problem solution binary that we have as in hci and as researchers typically doesn't work and it fails to account for the ways in which the liberties of being are denied to certain people and this is an inquiry that's been taken up by several hci scholars and critical race researchers a problem, albeit one that exists through social inequalities, matched with the software as an artifact in response, does not equate a sound solution. When we settle structured inequalities like over-policing and profiling of Black communities, bias in healthcare for patients in Black and Brown underserved communities, and unfair historical discriminatory lending practices in Black communities, we must assess to what end do our design solutions serve? And do our solutions have the power to break vicious, torturous cycles of inequality 
And so what might our solutions actually do to combat the double bond, double bond that HCI may face? And for us in our industry, in our field, um, we are faced with this double-edged sword. Our double bond conflates anti-Black racism and design solutions. And anti-Black racism is systematic. And in seeking to dismantle it, we must assess what logics and structures uh, that erase, harm, and innate violence toward Black lives. And in doing that, we also have to think about design solutions and research solutions um, and how they're innate for HCI and developing solutions. It's imperative for us to be reflective, but also reflective, thinking about what do our solutions work uh, for and who do our solutions work for? Are they mismatched for what we're trying to design for? And how do we know if our designs promote life, liberty, and happiness for communities of people? So coming to terms with how we can see solutions and systems in HCI means that contemporary it means that understanding the contemporary HCI trends um, emerge from and reproduce really techno optimistic roots of computing. And so tre trends and in, in words like techno chauvinism, techno optimism, uh, techno solutionism um, all emerge from this idea that there's a belief that digital devices are a solution to a range of social problems, um, which is often rooted in masculine STEM disciplines. And so wicked problems that produce um, social and political implications really without fixed answers oftentimes don't actually give us pathways to solving them. And maybe sometimes there aren't actual ways of solving them. So how do we stop thinking of our design solutions um, as the end and as the finite ways to address issues rather than finding ways towards fostering more equity um, within HCI? And so the politics of solutions in HCI that we have as practitioners and as researchers, meaning determining who or what matters, deciding the stakes of solutions and taking a position. So what social structures or problems are socially and politically contingent? And then what artifacts and techno solutions um, do we produce? And if those productions have politics in themselves. So those of us in our positions as practitioners and as researchers, we have the privilege of deciding who Who's technical, whose technological capacities and possibilities to build toward, and we decide what histories of discrimination, exploitation, and violence we choose to see. And so to what end do we think about what our solutions have and what are ways in which we can begin to break down the way that we see us solving for? It doesn't mean that the things that we produce and the solutions that we um, want to contribute are not important, but Doing things like splitting the problem from the solution and breaking apart the pairing that solution has, has depending on um, can start to allow us to think more around like how can we uh, start to individually think around what are these systemic issues and what might have brought upon these things um, rather than trying to build upon technological advances that seeks to solve for problems. Examining the problem without the solution. So what does it mean to see a system, systemic injustice by itself without a technological intervention. And lastly, examining the intervention itself without the problem. What is a form of um, AI that determines who gets healthcare first um, without the actual issue? Like, what are the issues in healthcare that we might want to seek to address first, right? And so what if operating outside of a frame of being, an ontology, could mean for working towards anti-Black racism and so HCI, what we need to do is we need to reframe solutions void of problems from varying angles of our own existence. The argument that we make urges for alternative approaches to problem solution pairing in HCI that resists the assumption that everything must be fixed and instead allows for collective creativity and imagination. Critical frameworks in HCI have offered alternative visions for the world, like participatory design and equity-centered design approaches that shift power and decision-making to communities. We envision a problem-solution pairing that separates research from action and allows designers to wield interpretive power. We argue that HCI design can be mismatched from critical frameworks, and then we simply don't want to modify current and existing HCI approaches based on warrant proposals, but we instead aim to use this philosophy to inspire and to engage us. We find a direct link to Warren's radical proposal, being that this invites a possibility of critical design practices that promotes liberation for Black people from systems of impression, even in our own technological solutions. What we need to, in HCI towards more equity and justice is solidarity and not just solutions.
Thank you so much for attending our talk. We hope you enjoyed it.